son of a bitch! <laughs> well, uh, I did this with Mark Bell a long time ago, and he was also like, you son of a bitch! And everybody in the comments was like, only one person could say it. <laughs> well, we'll see if people in the comments have even watched the movie on my yeah. channel. Yeah, but... if you're young and you haven't watched <laughs> Predator, that's your homework before we even yeah, before yeah, we get to it. Before anything, otherwise you're automatic unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, Coach Show here at the Underground Strength Gym. I mean, this is uh, legendary for me. Uh, this guy is a legend to me, which uh, this whole thing started almost like 10 years ago, yeah, really, which has been, it's been crazy. Uh, so when I was getting into strength training, trying to learn things, uh, YouTube was super green at the time, but you were like, one of the only guys who was putting out early like, early yeah, yeah like, 2006 was my yeah. first video yeah. and i remember calling uh this guy dan huff and i said dude there's this website called youtube i posted a video and 16 people have watched it it's like oh my god and so uh yeah 2006 was the first video crazy so i would watch Ooh. his stuff I, I was learning a lot from him uh, and it was just like raw stuff I haven't seen before. There's these just like, I, I thought they were savages, you know? Like that was the only best way to, to put it when you see these kids doing pull-ups with towels, chains around their neck, picking up kegs, slipping tires, Metallica was blaring. Yes. Like, I remember just watching it being so captivated. I was like, <laughs> this is the shit that I want to do. Oh, I, I miss those days. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm hype right now. So uh, anyway, I ended up getting certified through Zach a couple years later. We've always kept in touch. Uh, and we're kind of doing this series like finding the fire. So for me, it's been really cool for this whole thing to come full circle back to the underground. Uh, but we're just gonna have fun. We're gonna make some really awesome videos. We're just gonna talk back and forth. Uh, you guys will be part of this whole thing with us. Uh, so I'm just, dude, I'm grateful to be here. I'm honestly. pumped. I, I am pumped <laughs> that you're here. Yeah, uh, so super it's gonna be excited. Good. So our first video is, <clears throat> I wanna do a gym tour, okay? Yes. Anytime I travel uh, to a gym, I always like seeing things that I don't have. I, I like kind of picking their brain on why they have certain things here. Uh, so Zach, honestly, man, just like run us through. Yes. There, there's a lot of, what would we say history here history no doubt uh so yeah, yeah take us through this this gym setup bro so we've been here like a little more than 10 years and um do you remember when hurricane sandy hit yeah 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 so we're a mile from the beach <clears throat> so that was like 10 and a half years ago so this town got like this is the railroad tracks right here the water went from the beach to the train tracks so 50 percent of the housing got destroyed so at the time, I had one location up in like central, almost North Jersey, where you first went. And I uh, had been living here for who, about like two, three years. And it just, through drop, riding my bike after Hurricane Sandy, seeing like the houses destroyed, people were living in tents. You saw, um, you know, uh, sofas and uh, bed mattresses on the sidewalk, show like kids, stuffed animals, and it just broke my heart. And I was like, man, I'm gonna, build something in this town to, you know, to do, I'm going to be all in for this town. And what's so ironic is I laugh now, but it wasn't funny at the time. But when I opened, I mean, I couldn't even give it away to anybody in this town. We were doing like anybody who was impacted through Hurricane Sandy, train them for free. We did a fundraiser for one of the assistant football coaches with cancer. We had four people from the football team show up, but we had 75 other people show up. So I learned like, you think you want to do something? What's the initial goal? You got to be able to pivot. So this gym was initially built with hopes of like being this like headquarters for the athletes mm -hmm. of this town. And so uh, now with like 75, 80 something athletes on average, we never have more than 10 from this town. Okay. That being said, it's just a place for athletes to really kick ass. You yeah. know, to, you know, my motto is changing lives through strength or building champions in sports and life. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's do some history of as much pieces of equipment as we can. And um, we're gonna start here. We're gonna do like, uh, well, I guess we'll do a lap. So yeah. these, these kegs over here, the, the way I got them was <clears throat> um, a guy that I wrestled in high school with, was a, uh, he was a state champ and owned a restaurant up in Edison where uh, the gym used to be. Then he moved to a neighboring town about 15 minutes from here and opened up a restaurant. So when I uh, was opening up, I was like, I gotta get you know my stuff, all this underground equipment. So I said, Joe, can uh, I come and trade you some of my uh, like books and train your son for empty kegs? 
So I picked up these kegs from my buddy Joe Duhigg. His uh, restaurant is called Seasons. It's in Howell. And uh, the guy's not here anymore, but my neighbor, he was like a young kid that was working on like um, aftermarket, like uh, trucks and Jeeps. So anything I needed, tools, welding, he did it. So uh, he welded the caps on, and I got the caps from the machine shop next door. We filled these up with water, we filled them up with sand. And so we've got anywhere from, you know, 40 pounds, and I think this heaviest one is 130 or something. We had the, oh, one, yeah, 132 pounds. So my buddy next door welded them with water. So the water really makes them, makes them sloshy. Hmm. Uh, chains we've had for a long time. I think some of them are from the, my Edison gym, a lot of bands. We do tons of stuff with bands for shoulder health and hip mobility. Got these for uh, ab wheel rollouts and also hand walking. Hmm. You ever walk on your hands with them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like brutal, brutal on the abs. Back extension from Elite FTS. This is something I've had since my garage days. Not the same uh, one, but the first one I actually bought uh, was uh, from Jay Ferrugia when he closed his first warehouse gym. Wow. So I've been using this thing a 45 degree from Elite FTS since when did we buy our house? Uh, 2003. So I've had it for a while. <clears throat> now, what's interesting about this. These are uh, stall bars. So I sent it to Bill Henninger over at Rogue long time ago because I didn't even own this gym at hmm. the time. And I sent him a video. You ever see that Polish weightlifting video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that video to me, I saw it in 2009. <laughs> I had it on like a bootleg DVD. They were training on stall bars. You know, guys were holding ankles, people were climbing up, they were doing all kinds of leg raises. And this used to be inside high school gymnasiums all across the walls, like something athletes and students Super had to European. do. <laughs> European and yeah. used to be American, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now uh, that would be toxic masculinity. So <laughs> <laughs> we know, you know, God forbid somebody gets strong. <laughs> so I sent Bill like screenshots of the video and said, can you build it? He's like, absolutely. So they built this. <clears throat> I wanted, you know, the thick bars. I'm a big believer in you know, all the grip strength work. But when I got it, I was like, damn, it's bigger than what I thought, and I really didn't have the space for it in that Edison gym. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like off to the back at my first gym, and when we got here, I was like, here we go. Now it's gonna be a place for us to go. So our younger athletes climb up and down it, they hang, they do pull-ups, we attach bands to it, lay on your back to do all kinds of leg raises, and then on the inside we got all you know the rings and uh, thick bars for doing pull-ups and stuff. So okay. we utilize it as like a little, you know, uh, body weight area. Okay, climbing rope, always gotta have a, uh, a rope. To say it wouldn't be underground <laughs> if you didn't have some climbing rope. Right? Yeah, and that, you know, it's interesting, that first gym you went to, we had that beam. They were all over the beam. Down the middle, <laughs> we had ropes and guys would climb yeah. up and across the beam. Um, so got this. This to me is one of my favorite, like 45, uh, not 45, regular back extension glute ham raises because it's just a simple pin pull. Hmm. So this is the Sornex um, glute ham raise. I like this one a lot, okay? Yep. Uh, stuff for jumping, gotta have athletes jumping, tires for flipping, and believe it or not, I always say this, I'm like, man, the, the, the smarter I've gotten, I use like air quotes, it's like, I, sometimes I get like, I overthink stuff and I'm like, oh no, like, they're gonna flip this tire. This tire here is like 550 and we barely use it. Whereas what's interesting is at the Edison gym, we had a tire that was like 600 something pounds, no tread on the edges, and kids that weighed 130 pounds were just savages. And they were like, I'll fucking do it. And now everybody's like, ah. And I'm like, <laughs> say to myself when I leave as a coach, I'm like, you pussy. <laughs> you know, I get mad at myself. So on my mind all the time is like, I gotta get these kids stronger. We got some of the uh, sandbags and Bulgarian bags here. Uh, I was telling Joe that I had the Army Navy duffel bags and I gave him one of our, I call him a kid, he's in his, I think he's like almost 24, 25, but um, he's in law enforcement. So I was like, listen, take these sandbags, just put them in your garage because we tend to use the uh, sand balls instead, which are uh, anywhere from, I think, you know, we got little ones for throwing up to the 150. So, uh, I, t I don't know. I don't know if what I like better. I think if you give me a rock, I'll get you strong. Yeah, yeah. But um, we got these, and then this is what's interesting. Here's interesting squat racks. So, 
I had, I had this platform here. We opened up, I built this uh, platform, but I had a small Sorenex just basic squat stand. And uh, <clears throat> we got rid of it. And I picked this up from Monmouth University as they upgraded their weight room. Now you could tell they didn't have money because they assembled it themselves and made it two left side. Two left side. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, all right, they had no money. So what's this rack is like the historical stuff. So these um, Ivanko clamps, you know, they still make these. These are great. I bought them from Ivanko, who I met Ivan, whose father owns Ivanko. I used Ivanko equipment since 19, I joined this gym in 1990 that had all Ivanko deep dish plates. So as a kid, I grew up in a gym where all you heard was this. You heard like plates rumbling. So these, they don't make these anymore. He sent these to me as a gift. You know, the kids don't know, like everything on this rack is like historical plates. And so there's a story behind kind of everything. So Joe, have you ever heard of uh, Iron Island Gym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Ken Leisner? There. There's 400 of these were made, 400 pairs. So when he opened Iron Island, which was in Long Island, <clears throat> he had them this like purplish color. Yeah. I have old video footage of him inside the academy and on my YouTube. But you know, this style of like underground strength training, I'd say Dr. Ken was really the first guy to bring it probably started doing it when he was training at a Zuber's yeah. gym. Have you heard of Zuber's gym? Yeah, yeah. this is like, like going back. Yeah, <laughs> Zuber's gym was from the 60s, but they were lifting like water-filled barrels, odd objects, you know, world's strongest man. That is cool. So Dr. Ken really brought that style of training, I don't even want to say to, to the masses. He brought it to whoever he was training, so he blended that high intensity training with yeah. odd objects and strongman training. So I picked those up from a guy who had like several pairs. He's like, if you wanna, you wanna buy like more, I'll give you this. I'm like, you ain't married. If you buy more, your wife will kill you. You know, it's like, I can only do so much. So those plates mean a lot to me. People offer to buy them from me. And I'm like, dude, like the money doesn't mean anything to me. The story behind the men who used it so when I squat, I'm predominantly, I squat here. Now these plates are the original deep dish from York. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is where guys were Olympic weightlifting. They were doing weightlifting with this. Iron, yeah. They were on the second floor. York Barbell's uh, gym was on the second floor. So those guys like John Grimmick, who were on the U Team USA, they couldn't drop the weights. They had to control everything down, which made them strong as hell. But these deep dish plates were given to me. Did you ever meet Henri Skiba, no. Carteret? Great guy, uh, you know, old school powerlifting guy. He had stacks of these wow. and he gifted me a pair. Oh, he nice. probably gifted them to me like 15 years ago. Now, you know, people sell them and, or collect them, but don't actually use them. And then inside is a uh, pair of rogue deep dish that Bill Henniger sent me as a gift. And I remember like I contacted the sales rep there that I know and I'm like, I have to send you money. Like tell Bill, don't send it to me. He's like, Bill doesn't want your money. It's too late. <laughs> you know? And so it's really cool seeing what Rogue does, like the mass yeah. uh, creation of equipment, bringing back old equipment. So the plates and stuff in here are all old. These plates that are painted up, I bought from a place called Reps Fitness that was sold. They said a guy that was a school bus driver was like an old bodybuilder was helping at a high school. And then after he was like retiring from everything, they like stopped training. So he took it back. Back then I was buying used weights. Listen to this for those of you before COVID times, 15 to 25 cents a pound for used equipment. Wow. Okay. We got sore neck tracks here with uh, Ivanko plates. Okay. Inside is an Intec. And then you could see, this was the first iteration of York bumper plates right in here. So they were a plate with just like a wrap around rubber. Yeah, pretty hard. Yeah, the, these are uh, 25 kilo. So they're the 55 pounders. Yeah. So it's like, you don't get to touch them until you've earned your way to deadlifting past, you know, 400 and change. So uh, I love Ivanko. It's got like a special place in my heart because I grew up on them. 
And what's interesting is like Ivanko equipment never breaks. Same thing with Sorenex stuff. You could go on eBay and see Sorenex stuff from, you know, 20 plus years ago and it hasn't broken yet. I think this is my original bench from Elite FTS that I got when I opened my first gym. I think I just replaced the pad. So it's from 07. And then a lot of specialty bars. <clears throat> I mean, this is big, especially as you're evolving in training and you want to stay healthy. So these are the T-grip bars, okay? The guy, uh, Tim, who invented these is from Long Island. So he brought these from Long Island. They're amazing, okay? This one's tough because of the revolving handles. This curl bar, hard to see from there. I saw the guys um, on Sor at Sorenex using it pre-2010, you know, like early days YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I saw Bert and his dad like benching with it with like three plates and a quarter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, a curl bar that could hold 300 pounds? I'll fucking buy that, <laughs> you know? So that is an old bar. This is my first ever thick oh, grip cool. bar. Yeah, I remember calling Bert at Sorenex on a flip phone and like pulling over and giving him my debit card. Uh, thick grip Swiss bars from Black Widow. And they, is that still around, Black Widow? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I speak with Dean often oh, yeah. and he just makes like, he loves to make people custom stuff, Yeah. but he also, he's super efficient now. He's making me like a thick grip dumbbell, yet with uh, standard plate sizes, because uh, I have old plates. Okay. So I, I try to get resourceful. He, I got a thick grip, a friend will weld it on, but these like uh, bars were meant for triceps originally, that zigzag bar, I use them for zercher squats. Nice. Okay, Intec plates, love those guys, Sornex plates. We got the monkey bars here, which if I had bigger space, it would be more. And then uh, a lot of old plates here on the uh, like belt squat area. So we have a lot of old dork plates. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and then, you hear that sound? Oh, That's yeah. what I grew oh, up yeah. on. You know, and so sometimes I'm like, ah, you got all these bumpers. But now that we do like, you know, do the weightlifting, you gotta be able to drop it. These 45s, or actually they're 44s, they're chrome. I bought them from a scrap yard close to my first gym. They were selling them at 50 cents a pound. Yep, Weeder. Weeder made everything with like, with the kilo. So it was 44, 33, 22, and 11 pounds. They were always a little thinner too. Yeah, they're thin, hard to kind of get your fingers yeah. in there. Whereas Ivanko was like, I got a bunch of Ivankos back yeah. here. They were the first, ones that like i remember always being able to like yeah grab them That's and put them on yeah. you have ivankos yeah, where'd you get yours i uh, just found a deal some of them selling them in the strongman community oh yeah. yeah yeah so i scooped them up i got as many as i could yes so to me as far as like steel plates that's they're my favorites and um i, I love them and i speak with ivan uh, from Ivanko quite often. That's cool. So here, <clears throat> these dumbbells on the bottom from 60 up to 100 were given to me. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> man. So here's what's another crazy story. So uh, Henri Skiba had a buddy he introduced me to who had a warehouse, like, I mean, massive warehouse. He would clean out gyms that went out of business or that were upgrading. And so he would take their prior equipment and then refurbish and resell. These came from a high school or a YMCA and they just delivered them. He's like, we can't sell these because we make equipment where we refurbish equipment for like New York sports clubs, Reebok, Crunch, all that stuff. So they dropped them off. These are probably older than me. You know, I'm born in 75. This stuff was made in the 70s. I'm not sure if it was made in the 60s, but what's interesting is how old stuff doesn't break. And then we got the 130s down here, which I've had since my garage. And oh, um, I know I need to probably get them re-welded because- say, are they welded? They yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it's like that inside yeah, weld is the, sketchy. Look at the plates, yeah. dude. So I was gonna see if you wanted to dumbbell bench them. <laughs> I'll say stuff like this to kids. I'll be like, like, don't be smashing the weights together. I was like, who's going to prom with you with no teeth? Like, yeah. ah. I'm like, there's a chance, but chances are a lot less if you're gonna be slamming these together when you bench them. So I got these that from a so gym. Cool. Yeah, and they're all like 
old uh, plate. So this yeah. is uh, billard. Dude, I love this. Yeah, billard. I think the inside, they're round. So I'm not sure if it was York or Weeder or Dan Lurie. And then I forget this brand. It's like a weird brand, but you see how it has like this waffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just, equipment was very different. I think it, you had a lot of kind of guys making equipment, small companies, mm -hmm. small foundries. There was a guy in uh, Springfield, New Jersey, which is like an hour away, 45 minutes away. He made Jackson plates. You try to buy them today, people collect them. They, you know, they don't use them. And so uh, I can't give those away. But the story behind that was uh, when I started training people out of my house, Actually, first what happened was I stopped going to local gyms. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand the shitty music and like there was no intensity. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. So I started training out of my house, you know, living with my parents. So I started buying little odds and ends of equipment. Well, before there was like Craigslist or any of that, I would go through the newspaper classified ads. So I was a teacher on my break and I'm looking through newspaper classified, see who's selling weights. Well, I see a gym for sale in Newark for 10,000 bucks. And at the time I'm saving money for the engagement ring for my uh, you know, future wife. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm gonna buy this gym in the hood of Newark. So I go to the gym in Newark <laughs> and uh, it was like a narrow gym, but everything was welded. Then there's a doorway into the other part of the gym that was a machine shop like these guys. This dude was in there smoking cigarettes, cutting steel, welding shit. Everything was welded. <clears throat> Every dumbbell was welded. The squat rack was built by himself. It went from the floor into the roof, into the ceiling. Wow. The leg press was the size of like a small Volkswagen. Everything was welded. So I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> do I buy, do I offer this guy, you know, seven grand and buy this gym? the money that's for my yeah, wife's my ring. ring. <laughs> and so uh, I think I speak with my dad and my dad's like, look, like it's Newark. It's not the best area. You, it's probably not a good idea. So I call the guy and I say, all right, I, you know, I'm not going to buy the gym, but can I buy some equipment? And uh, so what do I do? Like I take all cash that I have and I buy like a hundred, the hundred thirties. I buy anything that had old like stuff. So I had 130s, 90s, and I bought like 20 pairs of York plates. I'm not even training anybody, but I need 20 you pairs. Need, need so <laughs> I took all that weight and um, I don't know if I sold them in back in the day or some of them, I can't even remember what those are. And then these I bought from a guy, early days Craigslist. And then I had the dude next door and a friend of mine weld them because they had those Allen wrenches to be bolted on. So I had him weld all yeah. that stuff. That's awesome. um, these 60s I had kind of specially made from Ivanka with a slightly thicker grip, thicker than normal, and they just have a real tight feeling to them. They feel, I mean, it's like, okay, I'm driving in a Porsche and right here is kind of like, I don't know, I'm in like a normal car. Mm -hmm. This feels like the Porsche. These thick dumbbells got these handles when I would help out at Blair Academy which uh, we were talking about uh, the SEAL teams earlier. One of the, or two of the guys um, that wrestled there are in DevGrew, or I think one of them's trying to get in, they're brothers. But these were in like a barn on the property. Hmm. And uh, Coach Buxton and I were looking for like, you know, anything that we could use to like train them differently. Those feel great. Yeah, Until yeah. we like yeah. lift them, they just feel yeah, I like, like, that. I like that. something about them feels like so perfect. So these are from Blair. Then I had some of these old weights. You got some old York plates on there. And then again, I had my buddy weld them. And then the machine shop next door cut me these ends. So I'm luckily in next to people. I always say back here, we're like the hell's angels. Like people don't not want to know what we're doing back yeah, here. Yeah. So uh, got this, these are seventies and uh, you know, we got more Ivanko's here. And then we got more of these York uh, plates that I had welded and then on um, these two dumbbells see I, I picked stuff up like yeah, during uh, during like COVID time where people were selling like old equipment that probably their grandpa used and then I had my buddy get me the thick dumbbells and then he welded everything on 
And then right here, like, check these out. Yeah, man. so, dude, the old this, school. Yeah, this was really the first uh, globe dumbbell I bought. 150 pounds. That's crazy. So the story was, it was on eBay back when eBay was really like a garage sale. You know, it wasn't like a, you know, junior varsity team Amazon. So I see it for sale for pretty cheap. I mean, I think it was under 200 bucks. So let's say it was wow. like $150. Dude. I bid like $151, but the bid was gonna end at like 7.45 p.m. and I was coaching till eight. Well, eight o'clock session ends, I clean up, I go to my, somebody bids like $152, like a dollar more. So I'm like, son of a bitch. So I, I messaged the guy and I'm like, I'll give you 10 years free to undergroundstrengthcoach.com. I'll pay you double. <laughs> He's like, I felt so bad for you. So he gave, he, uh, I paid him. I don't even remember if he had me pay him double. And I wish I could reconnect with that guy because he was in uh, Union, New Jersey. He was making Atlas stones. This was yeah, 2007. Yeah. I remember he made me two Atlas stones. Um, but he said it was outside of somebody's like barn, kind of like in the ground. And then we have these York dumbbells. One pair I got during COVID, but this pair I bought, I remember when I first opened up the underground, I drove uh, finding them also on eBay. Back then eBay was local stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody was shipping anything. And I remember driving like 40 minutes, like outside of Princeton through the most dense fog. So I always remember like not being able to see. And I was like, Oh my God, if I get into a car accident, will these dumbbells fly through? You know, I'm worried about the dumbbells, dumbbells, not really worried about my, my life. And so this area here is kind of like physical culture, old stuff. We've got the center mass bells here. Rogue makes the fat bells, which at my high school, we've got all fat bells. This is a Thomas Inch replica from Sorenex. Oh, cool. So it's not the 182 pounds. It's something like 60 something pounds filled with steel shot. So it's very like wobbly. Uh, my dad used to own a company that made surgical instruments. So I would sometimes give him ideas and he would like have a, uh, you know, some of the machine guys like weld stuff. So we made these like rolling thunder handles and uh, we were gonna use them for like flies and triceps. But one day a kid just started adding chains to it and it became like the farmer walk yeah. uh, implements that we use. So. This area here is kind of like strength work. Got the uh, strongman log, which right. I'll be honest, we don't use it as much, especially as I've gotten like older and my shoulders and shit hurt. I don't use it as much. I'll use landmines or kettlebells overhead. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, speaking of landmines, that's the, uh, have you ever heard of the grappler? Yeah, wow. This is, this is from, I bought it while on the phone with Louis Holy Simmons. Crap. So in the uh, early 2000s, I would just call him every week and we would speak about training MMA fighters, wrestlers, uh, special strengths. So he was telling me about this one guy uh, who used to wrestle, who was a uh, UFC champ and pride champ who's passed away some years ago, but he said he would fatigue. So he's, he built, he put two landmines on like a, you know, a wood and he'd have him go for five minutes, 10 minutes. So when I was training wrestlers out of my garage, I would stand on this and each guy would hand them. I'd have them going for like a three minute, two minute period, like punching their hands. Uh, so this is from West Side Barbell. It's called, wow. the, called the Grappler. That's cool. Man. Yeah, so that's the, that's the original one. Got some clubs here. Um, this one's an interesting one. Um, it's from my buddy Frank DeMeo, kind of is like part of this company called um, uh, ADEX, ADEX Clubs. Okay. These are, you can slide off and adjust the weight. So uh, I use it quite often, almost every workout. I just like sneak it in between sets. A lot of hurdles, because the athletes, I want them jumping, a lot of jumping. So this place, I've always said, it's a place of work. And so that's what I want to see when the athletes are in here. Is our training dialed in for speed and sports performance? Absolutely. But I don't want to get away from the core, which is uh, really putting in the hard work because without it, there's no confidence to be built. There's no toughness to be built. And I see athletes who are highly successful have grit. They have toughness. They're not doing moderate things. Yeah. You know, they're living like a champion. Moderation would be, 
you know what? I could go to bed late three nights out of the week because the other three nights I'm doing a good job. Dude, if you want to be great, then you're going to have to really be dialed in and do some stuff that other people don't think is normal. So, um, you know, I always say, like, I'll fucking burn this gym down before I allow that mediocrity in here.